HTC's most recent entry into their Desire lineup boasts both a bold design and an affordable price tag. But is HTC's attempt enough to compete with the likes of Motorola and Asus? This is Bailey Stein with Android Authority, and this is my full review of the HTC Desire 626. The Desire 626's design is very similar to that of last year's Desire Eye, with a few tweaks. Gone is the larger 13 megapixel front facing camera, and with it goes the camera shutter button. There's also an absence of a dual LED flash, presumably to cut down on costs. While the design could be considered recycled, there was never really anything wrong with how the Desire Eye looked or felt in the hand, and that remains the case with the 626. With six different color options, each featuring complementary accents, there's a good chance that you'll find one that suits your tastes. Regardless of the color option, however, the Desire 626 is certain to feel nice in the hand. Although the phone is made of entirely plastic, it still feels fairly solid. It's also relatively thin and light, at 8.1mm and 139 grams. While you can't access the 2000 mAh battery, you can access both a single SIM slot and a micro SD card slot by opening the flap on the left side of the device. HTC says that you can expand the storage by up to 200GB if the 8GB of internal storage isn't enough. The power and volume buttons are positioned on the right side of the device, and both are disappointingly mushy. There's little tactile feedback, and while HTC may not have the best record for tactile feeling buttons, it's a shame that they didn't take this opportunity to improve on this from the Desire Eye. On the front, you'll find a single front-facing speaker on the bottom, below HTC's branding, as well as a 2 megapixel front-facing camera on the top, to the left of the earpiece. The 5-inch 720p display on the Desire 626 looks alright with good viewing angles. It's a bit on the warmer side, but not by much. There does seem to be some weirdness going on with sharpening where text and app icons look a bit off. To my surprise, there's no setting option to turn this off, and it's unclear why this is like this. Powered by the quad-core Snapdragon 210 clocked at 1.1GHz, the Desire 626 is a tad on the slower side. While I never had the phone freeze, I did notice some lag in certain areas, as well as frequent stuttering during animations. It's definitely still usable, and the 1.5GB of RAM is nice to see instead of the 1GB and provides a better multitasking experience. With the Adreno 304, the Desire 626 is able to play most casual games, but higher-end games seem to struggle a bit. In addition to slow load times, I also noticed frequent frame drops in Asphalt 8 on high and occasional frame drops while on medium. The HTC Desire 626 is equipped with 802.11n Wi-Fi, GPS, and GLONASS, and Bluetooth 4.1. Although the Wi-Fi signal is limited to 2.4GHz, I found the speeds and signal to be about on par with other devices. Since the Desire 626 will be sold by US carriers, you can be sure that each variant will fully support 4G LTE on its respectable network. While there is a single front-facing speaker on the bottom of the Desire 626, there's sadly no boom sound. The speaker itself is a bit distorted and could be louder, but it's still much better than virtually all rear-facing speakers. The 2000 mAh non-user replaceable battery provides disappointing battery life and won't make it through a full day of use for many people. During my battery life test, I took the phone off the charger at 9.30am and was able to get it to last until about 9.30pm with just over 2 hours of screen on time. Oddly enough, HTC's Sense UI hides screen on time values, so that number was provided by GSAM Battery Monitor. What's more unfortunate than the battery capacity is the fact that you can't swap it out, even if needed. Thankfully, there is a power saver mode as well as an extreme power saver mode if you need to get the phone to last just a little bit longer. The 8 megapixel rear camera is slightly better than average for this price point and it does perform quite well in properly lit conditions. It does struggle when processing bright colors however, but otherwise offers respectable image quality. HTC's camera app offers a bunch of different shooting modes, settings to change maximum ISO, exposure value, and white balance. You can even save your settings as a shooting mode for later access, which is a very handy feature. Running Android 5.1 Lollipop with HTC Sense 7 out of the box, the Desire 626 provides a very good software experience. Since it is an HTC device, you'll be getting HTC's Blinkfeed Launcher, 
powerful multitasking menu, customizable quick toggles, and general interface tweaks. HTC's skin may be a departure from stock Android, but unlike a few other Android skins, it still offers a very nice user interface with a clear focus on design. My only complaint about the software is the amount of bloatware that comes pre-installed out of the box. While it will depend on your carrier, my AT&T review unit included nearly a dozen AT&T apps and just general crap. Digital Life, Wild Tangent Games, Keeper, KeyVPN, Lookout, Uber, Yellow Pages, and a whole collection of redundant HTC apps are also present. There's even three separate apps for reading email pre-installed, which may confuse some users. Luckily, you can uninstall most of the bloatware, but it's still very annoying. Unlike on the HTC One devices, there's sadly no double tap to wake or other gestures available on the 626. I also have doubts that this device will be updated to Android Marshmallow, as HTC has refused to update similar devices like the Desire 610 in the past. If you do end up purchasing this phone, don't expect to receive any operating system updates. The HTC Desire 626 will be available for purchase on several US carriers soon, but you do need to be aware that the model that we're referring to in this review is actually a refined edition of the 626 proper, released back in March, sometimes referred to as the 626S, but still branded as the 626. It's a bit confusing, but you can easily tell the difference between the two by looking at the specifications. If you're on AT&T, you'll be able to acquire the HTC Desire 626 for $1 with a 2-year contract or for about $185 on AT&T Next, spread out across 28 months. Although the HTC Desire 626 offers a very nice design and build quality, a good camera, and an excellent software experience, its flaws are significant. The display does seem to have some sharpening issues, the performance is relatively poor, and the battery won't last many users through a full day of use. While the Desire 626 may have been a good choice at this price a year ago, the market today is much more competitive with competing options like the $200 Asus Zenfone 2 and $180 Moto G 3rd generation. Even if you are a diehard HTC fan, you'd be much better off by picking up a used 1M8 for about $200. Thank you for watching this video and please make sure to give it a thumbs up below if you enjoyed it. Also, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content and feel free to leave a comment below. Finally, be sure to visit the Android Authority website for additional coverage as we are your source for all things Android.